I thought that my original Pleasant View save file was lost and gone forever. But today I was going through my old backups and I found deep in the bowels of my folders a copy of the original Pleasant View. And much to my surprise, when I loaded it up, there was no corruption and everything was just how I left it. And even though it's a complete mess, I have never loved a hood as much as I love my original Pleasant View. The last time I played this neighborhood, Rosa Lothario passed away in a very sad series of events. And today I'm going to be returning to the Pleasant household to see how the family is coping after her untimely death. If you're new to my channel and you don't want to watch the last 65 episodes of my original Pleasant View Let's Play, don't worry, you don't have to. I will keep you updated on the history of the neighborhood as we play. So let's dive in and see how our Sims are doing. Ivan Pleasant is the son of Mary Sue and Daniel before they got divorced. He was Mary Sue's last child and he lives with her now after he came back from college. He's 25 years old and he's in a long-term relationship with Gia Caliente, the daughter of Nina Caliente and Don Lothario. They were high school sweethearts and continued dating throughout college. But Ivan recently has been sowing his wild oats and he had a bit of an affair with an older woman, Christy Stratton, who is a townie in Pleasant View. Now, they just had a kiss and that's all. He has a bit of a crush on her, but I'm hoping he's getting it all out of his system because I really want him to marry Gia, but the choice is his as always. I only do what my Sims want to do, and if he wants to pursue the affair, that's his choice. After the death of his stepsister Rosa Lothario, he got a job in the paranormal career in hopes that maybe someday he could resurrect her. Here is Ivan's family tree if you're interested. So Mary Sue and Daniel are his parents. Angela and Lilith are his sisters. He has two half-brothers by his father and Kaylin Langerak named Oliver and Patrick. Mary Sue is now married to Cassandra Goth. Both women were cheated on by their deadbeat husbands and decided that they had enough of men and they wanted to be together, so they got married in their elder years. Mary Sue has four grandchildren, three by Angela and one by Lilith. Cassandra has a single grandchild by her oldest daughter, Eva. She also has three other children, Primo, Rosa, who just passed away, and William Goth, who was adopted by Cassandra after Dawn left her. Or she kicks Dawn out, I guess. So that's where we stand with this family's history. Right now, Cassandra and Mary Sue are at work, and we are going to play Ivan. Ivan wants to get a kitten. He wants to reach level five of the cooking skill, and he wants to dance with Gia. I think it's time to invite Gia over for a little sexy dancing. Apparently, we're just having a servant's party here at the Pleasant House. So we've got the gardener, the maid, and the butler all just hanging out in the living room instead of doing their jobs. You guys better get to work before Mary Sue gets home. She's not going to put up with your slacking. Ivan and Gia are spending some quality time together. He wants to tell her an inside joke, so I'm just going to continue that until he wants to marry her, basically. Come on. Oh, God, she's sick. No, no, no. You get your germs away from here. Oh my god, she's got the Flophouse flu. The Flophouse flu is what killed Rosa, and now G is spreading it around to the rest of the neighborhood. Great. Oh, she's coughing all over him. Well, Ivan is obviously boring her, so I think it's time that Gia leaves before she gets everybody in this household sick. Yeah, he doesn't have any more wants for her, so she's going home. Now we're going to get down to the business of buying things. Ivan wants to buy a rug, new clothes, and get a kitten and a puppy. Oh my god. Okay, he wanted a kitten first, so we're doing that. Ivan has also been sleeping in the hallway in his mom's house because Rose's took Lilith's old room and Mary Sue made Angela's old room into her office. But now that poor Rosa has passed away and here is her urn, oh bless her heart, we're gonna put her outside for the time being until we can get her to the cemetery. I'm gonna clean out her room and we're gonna give it to Ivan. Ivan likes sports so I made his room sporty and now he has his own place in the house. He doesn't have to sleep in the hallway anymore. Lucky you Ivan, moving on up in the world. Got a chance card for Cassandra. Oh god, this is one that can get her fired, I think. So she is a teacher. She's taking the kids on a field trip. Should she go to the mall or the video arcade? I think we're going to choose arcade. She got demoted. Damn it, Cassandra. Well, Cassandra's now back to level three field researcher. She's never really been that big into her career. She never made it past level four in her career in all of her life. What are you so proud about, Cassandra? You just got demoted. 
<laughs> she's proud of herself and then she's gonna cry. I mean, life just couldn't get any harder for her. Her daughter just died and then she got demoted. On the same day that Cassandra gets demoted, Mary Sue gets promoted to level eight in the political career. She is now a judge. She has climbed the ladder. She has done so well for herself. She may even make it to level 10 before she passes away. She's still got about half of her elder years left in front of her. Every single person in this house wants to get a pet. A puppy and a kitten are both wanted, but since we already have a dog, I think we'll get the family a kitten. And we're just gonna do that the old fashioned way through the phone, calling the adoption service. Maybe this will cheer Cassandra up a little bit and kind of take her mind off of everything horrible that's happened to her over the past couple of days. And let's find a kitten. We've got male kitten, male kitten, female kitten, Bonkers. Okay, the only named one we still have left is Bonkers. We, we are gonna adopt Bonkers. Genius, Independent, and Finicky. Yes, I'm sure I wanna adopt Bonkers. Bring her on. Or him. I didn't see if it was a boy or a girl. I don't know. The new kitten is here and this fuzzy kitty needs a name. It is a boy. And his name is Bonkers. Aw, little Bonkers. Look how cute and tiny. Okay, Cassandra, come get your baby boy. Cassandra also has the want to resurrect Rosa. I don't know if that's ever gonna happen, but I'm gonna let her keep dreaming for it. Nothing like some sexy bathroom tickles after a hard day of work. These two are so freaking cute together. I can't even stand it. <laughs> Mary Sue loves giving massages ever since she learned how to do it on her honeymoon. Jeez, Mary Sue, what, you don't like the litter box? You don't like the cat toys? Well, too damn bad. <laughs> We've got to have pet supplies. Oh, and the, and the scratching post is going to make you vomit. I guess we better get something fancier for Mary Sue's expensive taste. How about a big ass cat tree? Does that make you happy, Mary Sue? I think she likes it. She didn't almost puke, so I guess it's a success. Ivan just got home from his first day of work in the paranormal career, and he's been promoted to conspiracy theorist level two. Who knows, maybe he'll even make it to level 10 before the end of his life. Um, some random townie just walked in our house, sat on our couch, and started watching TV. Who the hell are you? Samuel McDaniel? Excuse me, sir. She wants to bow at him. No, I tell him to leave. <laughs> Get out of my house, Samuel. Mary Sue still wants to be friends with her ex, Daniel. I don't know why on earth she would still want to be friends with that scumbag, but she does. So she's going to call him up and talk to him on the phone a little bit before she has to go to work today. Their relationship is is okay. Like, she has forgiven him after all the crap that he put her through, and they're close to becoming friends again. Mary Sue is very close to her daughter Angela, but unfortunately, she and Lilith do not get along at all. They are enemies. Mary Sue did help Lilith get custody of her child back after Lilith lost her child, and Lilith is grateful for that and did want to rekindle her relationship with Mary Sue. I don't know how that's gonna go in the future, though. Aww. Cassandra seems to be very happy with her new kitten. It can't take the place of Rosa in her heart, of course, but it's a welcome distraction for her. Ivan's working on his charisma skills so that he can get promoted in the paranormal career. I'm honestly not sure how long this career is going to last for him because his lifetime want is to own five top level businesses. He's going to inherit all of this cash whenever Mary Sue and Cassandra pass away, plus whatever he earns on his own. So he'll be one of the first Sims in Pleasant View to buy a proper business. I'm just going to move Rosa over here under this tree. Poor thing. She's just discarded out in the backyard. <laughs> We'll take her to the cemetery eventually. Mary Sue is arriving in style. She gets dropped off by a limo now that she's a judge. Aw, and she wants to give a gift. Let's see, do you have anything to give? She's got a desk and chair that she purchased at Malcolm Landgrab's furniture store. I guess we could give one of these to Ivan. Here you go, son. Just what you've always wanted. A random chair that matches nothing in our house that I bought for you at the furniture store and somehow stuffed into this tiny box just for you. <laughs> he loved it. Aw. At least I think he did. <laughs> Here, we'll get rid of this chair and we will give him the chair that his mom bought for him. Mary Sue, if you can't control your bladder, we're gonna have to get you some Depends, honey. <laughs> you better make sure you don't pee yourself. I'm quite surprised that they let Mary Sue become a judge because she's become a little bit senile in her older years, but somehow she still managed to do, manages to do her job well enough that SimCity believes she should be a judge. And I'm not gonna second guess their decision. Let her earn all the money she can <laughs> before she dies. Oh my God, it's me. <laughs> 
forgot that I made myself in Pleasant View. Why did I do that? I used to be the mayor of Pleasant View, but I don't play with a mayor anymore, so I need to kill myself off. Um, this sim looks nothing like me. I am aware of that, but she's my representation in Pleasant View. Cassandra, you need to take better care of your pets. Bonkers is starving. Oops, I kind of forgot about Bonkers for a little bit, but that's okay. We'll give him some food right now. I'm, I'm gonna blame it all on Cassandra. Go eat, Bonkers, eat, eat. You're a bag of bones. Bonkers, eat, go. Ah, there he goes, good boy. This is how it all started with these two, with a classic dance in the goth mansion. They fell in love, it was beautiful. And they are so happy together too. They've been friends for a very long time and they bonded over their shared experiences of dating two cheating romance sims who broke their hearts. <laughs> and then they realized that they loved each other all along. In the generation that they grew up in, it wouldn't have been proper for two women to come out as lesbians. But once they got older, they were like, screw it, we don't care anymore. We just wanna to be together and be happy and be accepted. And of course, everyone in Pleasant View has accepted their relationship and is happy for them. Even Daniel and Dawn. Oh, hey, Kevin Burb. What the heck? Kevin Burb just walked into our house and started using our toilet. Kevin, you can take a dump at your own house. Jeez. And Mary Sue's just like in there. <laughs> With him, Mary Sue, give the guy some privacy. He obviously had to go really bad if he just walked up into your house and uh, went straight to the bathroom. Hello, Mary. Now Mary Sue's bowing to him. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, why don't we tell him to leave? I, you know what? He must have knocked at the door. No, he didn't. The butler's already gone. I don't know why we have so many Sims, townies and playable Sims that just walk up in the pleasant house. Or I guess it's the oldie goth house now. I guess Mary Sue and Cassandra just must be very welcoming of visitors. They make everyone feel comfortable in their house. Okay, but Kevin, you know, you probably need to go now. Thanks. This is so freaking sweet. Ivan just got home from work and he wants to give a gift to his mother. That is so sweet. We'll, we'll have to buy her something uh, and give her a gift soon. But right now, it's time to eat spaghetti. Ivan knows that Mary Sue's been looking for a new bookcase for her office. So he bought her this super cute Mallory bookcase and he wanted to give her a gift. So he spent almost his entire paycheck. He made 280 smolians. This cost 250. He's just so appreciative of everything that Mary Sue has done for him, uh, letting him move back in and helping him through college and everything. So he wanted to do something to show her how much he appreciates her. So he bought her this bookshelf that he managed to cram into this tiny box once again. Aww. Okay. She liked it, I think. <laughs> so let's put it in her office. There we go. Perfect. It matches her office very well, too. Benny just became an elder. The dog is starting to show his age. Perhaps it's time to settle down and enjoy some lazy days in the sun. Aw, Benny. He's a good old boy. Um, but he stinks really bad, so why don't you wash him, Mary Sue? That's what I was trying to do, but he just aged up on me. Benny's been a part of the family for a very long time. I believe that we got him when he was a little puppy. Ivan wants some new clothes. It's a winter time and all he's wanted to do over and over again, he's rolled the want to get new clothes, so he borrowed his mom's car no shame there, to go down and get himself some new winter clothes. He needs something a little bit warmer to cover up his arms anyway. Oh wow, there's Fabian. Fabian, you look like you're freezing to death. Why is he so pale? Hello, sir. I'd like to purchase this black sweater to replace the current black sweater I'm wearing. Ivan doesn't like to switch it up when it comes to style. He likes to wear the same thing. Who is that waddling by? Dina Landgrab. I forgot Dina was prego. <laughs> So here's Ivan's new sweater. It's black exactly like his other one, but it covers all of his arms. Oh my God, we just got a networking townie. Hey Ivan, did I ever mention to you that I work in a discount home furnishings warehouse? Yes, we got the discount furniture network townie thing. Awesome. We never have to pay full price for furniture again. I wish this would have happened before we spent 250 on that bookcase. Hello, Patsy. Oh, I remember you, Patsy. Patsy Hardy, more like Patsy Harlot. Wow, Ivan, did you really just go outside the clothing store and start, start throwing the football with John Burb? <laughs> Poor Ivan. His dad, his dad is busy with his other family, so Ivan has to look up to John Burb as a father figure. 
Also, we've got a good warlock out here. Johnny Butler, the infallibly good warlock. Well, look what the cat dragged in. It's Dustin Broke just coming on in, making himself at home. Now, this worries me a little bit because Mary Sue has three bolts with her son-in-law, Dustin Broke, and she has been known to flirt with him before in her old age. And Cassandra just got promoted to science teacher again. Good for you, Cassandra. Don't screw it up this time. Hey, Dustin, thanks for coming over to visit Mary Sue. That's very kind of you. I don't know where Angela is. <gasps> Mary Sue, stop that. So Angela's at work. That's why she didn't come over with Dustin, but I don't know why he left the kids behind. So Mary Sue's calling over to the house and telling the grandkids to come over and get some dinner. Vincent, Whitney, and Tabitha are on their way over. Angela had a bunch of kids, if you don't remember. <laughs> And here they come. It looks like we need to do some winter clothing shopping for little Whitney because she looks pretty cold there. <laughs> but the butler made hamburgers and they're all going to go to waste if the kids don't come over and eat them. Mary Sue is very close to Tabitha. She spent a lot of time with her when she was young, but she doesn't know the younger children as well. Dustin, why are you wearing a wetsuit? What the <laughs> He put on his wetsuit so he could go swimming in winter, I guess. Aw, isn't this cute? All the grandkids over for dinner at Grandma's house. Alexander Goth, what the hell? <laughs> I have never had a household where so many random sims just wander into the house. Okay, Alex, um, sure, help yourself to a cheeseburger, I guess. <laughs> Nobody invited you, but we're not going to turn you down. I'm sure Cassandra will be happy to see you. She hasn't seen you in a while. We'll have Cassandra come get this last burger. All right, Ivan has just been promoted to tarot card reader level three. He's just really climbing the ranks very quickly in the paranormal career, so good for him. Winter time is here, and the family has decorated for the holidays. We have a lovely tree with lots of gifts underneath, and tomorrow the family's going to exchange gifts. Everybody's been in a very gift-giving mood here. Mary Sue wants to give a gift to Ivan. Cassandra just wants to give a gift in general. Ivan has already given his mother her Christmas gift early or her winter fest gift, I guess. Um, but we'll still do a little gift exchange tomorrow for the family. Now, I'm not going to have Santa come because there aren't any children in the household. And I mostly only do the whole Santa Claus thing whenever we have kids in the household. Instead, we're just going to have the family do a gift exchange. Winterfest is here in the oldie goth pleasant household. And Ivan has awakened with a craving. He wants his favorite meal for Winterfest, spaghetti. <laughs> And he also wants to serve food. So you know what, Ivan? You can be the lucky person who gets to cook the holiday meal. Just don't burn down the house, please. And who says you can't have spaghetti at 8 a.m.? We should make that a holiday tradition in this household. Yesterday, the family went shopping for gifts. So everyone has a gift to exchange today. And Cassandra is bringing out the booze. <laughs> She's like, it's a holiday. It's time to have some juice. How's that spaghetti coming? We got spaghetti. We got booze. We've got gifts. It's going to be a great holiday in this household. <laughs> Everyone's sitting down to the traditional holiday breakfast of spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> All right, breakfast is over and it's time to exchange gifts. Ivan's going to go first. Here you go, Cassandra. Ivan got you a lovely juniper bonsai tree. Let's see how she likes it. Come on, open it up. Well, she shrugged at it. Come on, Cassandra. He tried, okay? <laughs> he tried his best to get you something nice. Now it's Cassandra's turn. She's giving him a map to Pagoda in the Shadows. And this is a very special thing that she found when she and Mary Sue went on vacation. And she knows she's probably never going to get back to Takamizu, but there's still time for Ivan. Maybe he'll even go there on his honeymoon. But this is a very, very nice and thoughtful gift. Let's see how he feels about it. Oh yeah, he really likes it. <laughs> that was better than a shrug. Now Cassandra is going to give a gift to Mary Sue. And she bought Mary Sue this lovely porcelain oval mirror to put in the bathroom because they've been needing a new mirror in their second bathroom. Let's see how Mary Sue likes it. Oh, she really likes it. Okay, good. <laughs> Get out of the way, dog! Trying to watch the gift exchange go down here. 
And then Mary Sue, Mary Sue has gifts for both Ivan and Cassandra. We'll do Cassandra first. For Cassandra, she bought this lovely swan statue with two swans making the shape of a heart. I don't know why, it's, it's pretty. It reminds her of Cassandra and their love. So that's what she got for her. Let's see if Cassandra likes this any better. Oh, she likes that a lot better. She didn't care for the bonsai tree. <laughs> and now it's time for Mary Sue to give Ivan his gift. His gift is practical, not fun, but Ivan's a practical kid. I think he'll appreciate it. She got him this very expensive desk that she bought at Malcolm's Furniture Store in Blue Water Village to replace the cheap desk that he has up in his room. Oh, he liked it. All right, good. <laughs> Okay, now I can put everybody's gifts in the house. Mirror goes here. Bonsai tree and swan here. And we can sell Ivan's old desk since he got this much nicer one here. What a lovely holiday they've had together. So Ivan wants to talk about hobby. I think this would be a great time to call Aja, invite her over and talk to her about his hobby. I'm gonna be very liberal with that want. <laughs> Gia's here and Mary Sue is also calling up Daniel to invite him over. She's calling him like, hey, Daniel, you need to come and see your son on Winterfest, okay? I don't care about our relationship, but come see your son. Nope, he's at work like he is all the time. Well, we tried. We tried our best. Uh-oh, it's a Winterfest booty call. Well, I hope Mary Sue and Cassandra don't need to use their bedroom because Ivan and Gia are making themselves right at home in there. Let's just give them some privacy. <laughs> I guess it's been a while for both of them. It's a casual woohoo and oops, I forgot to make Gia selectable. So there's no chance she'll get pregnant. That's okay. There'll be plenty of time for babies later. <gasps> oh crap. The Christmas tree just caught on fire. Oh no, 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 no. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, do we have a smoke alarm? <laughs> oh Jesus. Oh no, oh no, we don't have a smoke alarm. Okay, somebody has to call, somebody has to call. Call emergency, call emergency. Stop doing the dishes, call emergency. No, 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 okay, let's see if we can get somebody to come and start extinguishing this, please extinguish, extinguish. Okay, no, we did, we did. <laughs> we did have a fire alarm somewhere, I don't know where it is, but we had one. Okay, no, you don't need to call, they're on the way. Oh, come on, come on, it's spreading. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> it's a winter fest on fire. <gasps> no, 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 Cassandra. Oh my God, Cassandra's on fire. Oh, no, 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 no. Somebody put her out. Somebody put her out. Oh, jeez. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I thought we were gonna lose Cassandra to the winter fest fire. <laughs> oh, okay. It's all out, it's all out. Oh my God. That wasn't too bad, actually. Um, let's put the tree away. It's time to put the tree away now. Thank you. <sighs> Nearly gave me a heart attack. Thank you, Neil Letourneau, for your service. Thank God we had a smoke alarm. If we didn't, I think we might have lost Cassandra, for real. Where the hell is the smoke alarm? I don't even know where it is. G is still coughing the flop house flu all over our house. She hasn't gotten anybody sick yet, but I don't want to take any chances. So uh, why don't you just go home? Go back to the flop house. Also, Cassandra, you need to cover up those gams, honey. Let's see if we can put some pants on you. Um, gussy up and plan outfit. Well, we've got a long ass skirt. I guess that's better than shorts. Okay, just put the skirt on for now, I guess. That skirt does look, kind of look like her though. Well, you don't match at all, but at least you'll be warmer. <laughs> we need to get her another shirt. Oh, what a winter fest. What a holiday that was. It was pretty successful besides the fire, but hey, at least it'll give them something to remember. So I hope you've enjoyed this little return to Pleasant View. Uh, leave a comment down below and let me know if you want to see more uh, Pleasant View Let's Play on the channel. My name is Cindy and I will see you with a new episode very soon. In the next episode, we'll be playing the Ramirez family in Blue Water Village. Thank you so much for watching.